Well, let's go. Let's talk about Moore's law a little bit. It's, uh, yeah. uh, at the broad view of Moore's law, where it's just exponential improvement of uh, computing capability, uh, like OpenAI, for example, recently uh, published this kind of papers looking at the exponential improvement in the training efficiency of neural networks mm -hmm. for like ImageNet and all that kind of stuff. We just got better on this. This is purely software side just mm -hmm. figuring out better tricks and algorithms for training neural networks. And that seems to be improving uh, significantly faster than the Moore's law prediction, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's in the software space. Like, what do you think if Moore's law continues or if the general version of Moore's law continues, do you think that comes mostly from the hardware, from the software, some mix of the two? some interesting totally, uh, so not not the reduction of the size of the transistor kind of thing, but more in the, uh, uh, in the totally interesting kinds of innovations in the mm -hmm. hardware space, all that kind of stuff. Well, there's like a half a dozen things going on in that graph. So one is there's initial innovations that had a lot of headroom to be exploited. So, you know, the efficiency of the networks has improved dramatically and then the decomposability of those and the, the use go, you know, they started running on one computer, then multiple computers, then multiple GPUs, and then arrays of GPUs, and they're up to thousands. And at some point, so so it's sort of like they were consumed, they were going from like a single computer application to a thousand computer application. So that's not really a Moore's law thing. That's an independent vector. How many computers can I put on this problem? Because the computers themselves are getting better on like a Moore's law rate. But their ability to go from one to ten to a hundred to a thousand, yeah. you know, was something. And then multiplied by you know the amount of computes it took to resolve, like AlexNet to ResNet to Transformers. It's it's been quite, you know, steady improvements. But those are like S curves, aren't they? Yeah. That's the exactly kind of S curves yeah. that are underlying Moore's law from the very beginning. Yeah. So, so what what's the biggest? What's the most uh, productive? a uh, rich source of S curves in the, in the future, do you think? Is it hardware or is it software? Or is it so hardware is going to move along relatively slowly, like, you know, double performance every two years. The, <laughs> there's still... I like how you call that slow. Yeah, you know, that's the slow version. The snail's pace of Moore's Law. Maybe we should, we should, uh, <laughs> we should, we should uh, trademark that one. <laughs> that's <laughs> Where, whereas the scaling by number of computers, you know, can go much faster. You know, I'm sure at some point Google had a, you know, their initial search engine was running on a laptop, you know, like, yeah. and at some point they really worked on scaling that. And then they factored the, the indexer from, you know, this piece and this piece and this piece, and they spread the data on more and more things. And, you know, they did a dozen innovations. But as they scaled up the number of computers on that, it kept breaking, finding new bottlenecks in their software and their schedulers and, and made them rethink. Like, it seems insane to do a scheduler across a thousand computers to schedule parts of it and then send the results to one computer. But if you want to schedule a million searches, that makes perfect sense. So, so there's the, the, the scaling by just quantity is probably the richest thing. But then... As you scale quantity, like a network that was great on 100 computers may be completely the wrong one. You may pick a network that's 10 times slower on 10,000 computers, like per computer. Mm -hmm. But if you go from 100 to 10,000, that's 100 times. So that's one of the things that happened when we did internet scaling, is the efficiency went down, not up. The future of computing is inefficiency, not efficiency. But scales, inefficient but scale. scale. It's it's scaling faster than inefficiency bites you, and as long as there's you know dollar value there, like scaling costs lots of money. Yeah. But Google showed, Facebook showed, everybody showed that the scale was where the money was at. It was, and it, so it was, it was wor worth it financially. Do you think is it possible that like basically the entirety of Earth will be like a computing surface, like this table will be doing computing? This hedgehog will be doing computing. Like everything, really inefficient, dumb computing will be science leveraged. fiction books, they call it computronium. Computronium? We, we turn everything into computing. Well, most of the elements aren't very good for anything. <laughs> like you're not gonna make a computer out of iron. Like, you know, silicon and, and carbon have like nice structures. You know, I, we'll, we'll see what, what you can do with the rest of it. No, I just, like people talk about, well, maybe we can turn the sun into computer, but it's, 
it's hydrogen and a little, little bit of helium. So uh, what what I mean is more like actually just adding computers to everything. Oh, okay. So I thought like, you're just con converting all the mass of the universe into a computer. No, no, no. So not using. It'd be ironic from the simulation point of view. It's like the simulator build mass to simulate like. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, ultimately, this is all heading towards a simulation. Yes, yeah, well, I, I think I might have told you this story. At Tesla, they were deciding, so they want to measure the current coming out of the battery, and they decide between putting a resistor in there and putting a computer on, with a sensor in there. Mm -hmm. And the computer was faster than the computer I, did, I worked on in 1982. And we, we chose the computer because it was cheaper than the resistor. So, so... Sure, this hedgehog, you know, it costs thirteen dollars, and we can put a, you know, an AI that's as smart as you in there for five bucks. It'll have one, you know. So computers will be, you know, be everywhere. I was hoping it wouldn't be smarter than me because well, everything's going to be smarter than you. But you were saying it's inefficient. I thought it's better to have a lot of dumb well, things. Well, well, Moore's law will slowly compact that stuff. So even the dumb things will be smarter than us. The dumb things are going to be smart. Are they going to be smart enough to talk to something that's really smart? You know, it's like, well, just remember, like a big computer chip. Yeah. You know, it's like an inch by an inch and, you know, 40 microns thick. It doesn't take very much, very many atoms to make a you know, high power computer. Yeah. And 10,000 of them can fit in a shoebox. But, you know, you have the, the cooling and power problems, but, you know, people are working on that. But they still can't write uh, compelling poetry or music or... Uh understand what love is or have a fear of mortality. So so we're still winning. Neither can most of humanity, so. <laughs> well, they can write books about it. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>